Hello, my name is Eric Salib. I'm one of the sports medicine physicians. Today we'll be going over our exam of the ankle. So since we have the patient standing, we're going to start in the standing position first. But first, I'd like to tell you how we'd like to go through this. My methodical approach to any joint uh, in the body starts with inspection, moves on to palpation, range of motion, strength, and then we go over special orthopedic tests. While we have the patient in standing position, we'll have the camera focused on him in the standing position. What we're looking for again is symmetry, right to left. We're looking at how he stands. Does he have a normal arch? Is his arch high or low? Does he roll his foot in? Do you see any wear on the big toe? Any calluses on the top of the small toes? Is there any obvious asymmetry with the calf size? And since we have a decision, we'll then have him turn 180 degrees so we can visualize him from the back. And again, since we have such a good view here, we will look at the calf again, right to left. We'll follow that down and look at the, just the basic appearance of the Achilles tendon, the bottom of the heel. We'll look to see if the foot rolls in or out. When the foot rolls in, we call that pronation. If the foot rolls out, we call that supination. So in an exaggerated form here, if it does this, that would be supination, and the opposite would be pronation. Again, he looks neutral. We don't see any obvious signs of that, but the basic rule when standing behind the patient is the three-toe rule. If you see the three lateral toes exposed, just looking at the patient from behind, they may have signs of pronation. And that can be important in terms of wear on the ankle, stress on the ankle, uh, as well as the midfoot. Then we'll have the patient move to a seated position. Now moving on to inspection while the, the patient is in the relaxed seated position. Um, <clears throat> one again we'll look at just to see if there's any deformities along the midfoot, toes, if there's any asymmetry along the calf or heel. And we'll look for any signs of bruising, particularly if there's an ankle sprain we'll see a lot of bruising sometimes on the lateral ankle, sometimes on the medial ankle. If there was an injury to the Achilles tendon, there may be some bruising and swelling in the back. So make sure you look all the way around, do circumferential inspection all the way around. Next, we'll start with palpation. What I like to do is start in the ankle itself and then move distally as well as proximally along the leg when we're palpating. Specifically, just looking at the ankle, however, we'll start with palpation of the malleoli. So the lateral malleolus comes down and ends right about here. You'll want to push along the malleoli, both at the lateral side and posterior side. Since you're on the lateral side of the knee, you'll also check the base of the fifth metatarsal, along the perineals, peroneus muscles, as they come up behind the ankle. You'll then come up and palpate the proximal fibula and see if that's tender at all also. Then you'll come around to the medial side of the knee, uh, medial side of the ankle, and palpate on the medial malleolus, again, just based on it, as well as the posterior aspect of it. Now we'll move to the soft tissue for palpation. We have a large lateral complex of ligaments on the lateral ankle, as well as a deltoid ligament on the medial. So, the most common injured ligament in the ankle is the ATF, or anterior talofibular ligament. If you find the lateral malleolus and just move anterior in front of it and palpate, that will be the ATF. If you follow the malleoli and move just distal to it, this will be the calcaneofibular ligament. And if you find the lateral malleolus and move just posterior to it, that will be the posterior talofibular ligament. Again we talked about the perineal muscles. They start up here laterally. They come down behind the ankle and attach peroneus brephus here and longus wraps right underneath the foot here. So we'll just palpate along the tendons here and see if there's any soreness or tenderness. As we come along the medial ankle, the deltoid muscle is a spray of ligaments that come around the medial malleolus, so you'll just palpate just distal around it, posterior, distal, and anterior to see if there's any tenderness. 
Now we'll test for range of motion. The ankle moves in four basic directions. First, we'll start with plantar flexion. So I'll have the patient push down like on a gas pedal and we'll measure how far he can plantar flex. Normally is about 40 degrees. Then we'll have him lift his ankle up into dorsiflexion and this can be from anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees. And you may relax. Next we'll test inversion which is rotating the ankle so that the face or the base of the foot is facing medially and then we'll have them evert the foot. Again, we'll want to then go to the opposite foot and see if this is normal in terms of his range of motion or symmetric. After we test range of motion, we'll move on to the strength testing. So we'll do those same exact motions exempt against resistance. So again, we'll have the patient push down like on a gas pedal for plantar flexion. We'll have them lift the ankle up for dorsiflexion. We'll have them push in against us for inversion, and I'll push out an eversion. After we're done with this, then we can move on to special tests. Most of the injuries that occur in the ankle are ankle sprains, so we'll spend the majority on our exam on testing ligaments. However, there can be tendon injuries that also occur, as well as injuries to the bone. So we already pushed on the bones, which are fine. We also pushed on the ligaments. So let's test the ligaments now. So on the lateral ankle, there are two basic tests to test the integrity of the lateral ankle ligaments. The first one is the anterior drawer. Similar to the knee as we looked at before, and what we're actually trying to take the, to take the foot and try and move it anteriorly in relation to the tibia and measure the amount of translation that occurs. So the best technique to do so, in my opinion, is to cup the foot at the heel, stabilize the tibia, and you'll be applying a force anteriorly. So the best way is to just move it anteriorly. Some people like to grab the forefoot and pull. This is one other method that can be done. The other one is Taylor tilt. You'll take the, again, stabilizing of the tibia, and you'll invert the foot and see if this causes pain. This is again testing the lateral complex. A better test than the Taylor tilt, however, is a side to side test. So, same positioning as the anterior drawer, you'll cup the heel, you'll stabilize it, and you'll apply a side to side force. So, you'll press medially, and then you'll switch hands and press laterally and you'll measure the amount of translation that is occurring side to side. If there is a significant lateral ankle injury you'll feel a clunk or a significant movement with that. Sometimes people can get high ankle sprains which is an injury to the syndesmotic membrane which holds the tibia and fibula together so they'll get an injury that radiates all the way up through this position. A high ankle sprain typically will not cause swelling in the ankle, but just above it, there may be swelling in this zone. So you can palpate in that area. However, you can also do something called a squeeze test. The squeeze test is to just take the tibia and the fibula up high and squeeze them together. And you'll ask the patient if that causes any pain that radiates down through the syndesmosis. These injuries typically occur while the patient has the foot planted it goes into forced dorsiflexion and eversion. And that's usually the mechanism they'll describe to injure that. If you come around to the medial side of the ankle, we have the deltoid ligament. There is no specific test to test for the deltoid ligament, but the inversion test and the side-to-side -side test help us look at that. Now lastly, as we wrap around towards the back of the leg, we'll be looking at both the calf muscle and as it turns into the tendon known as the Achilles which comes down and attaches onto the heel. So what I'd like to have my patient do here is lay down on his stomach so we can show that to you. So if we look at, so if we look at, let's again look at the calf muscles, how symmetric they are. 
If there was a calf injury, most of the time these occur in the medial gastroc head. So the patient will usually have pain right where the calf muscle ends and the tendon starts. So you'll press around right at the edge of it here or laterally and see if that causes pain. Additionally, as we follow that tendon down, we'll look at the Achilles tendon. We'll see if there's any swelling, any bump, any hardness as we palpate, or is there any divot, step off, or significant pain. And the way we'll test the integrity of the Achilles tendon is to, and we'll show you on this leg, we'll bring the knee up into 90 degrees, have the patient relax the foot, and we'll squeeze the calf. In a normal functioning calf to Achilles tendon insertion, the foot will then plantar flex as we squeeze the calf. So as we do that here, you can see the foot move into plantar flexion. And